We are with Captain Lampskog, um, captain of the vessel. We have just entered Drake Passage. We're going to be talking about the conditions in Drake Passage and how it comes about. And uh, we'll start by saying uh, uh, hello to uh, Captain Skog. And uh, Captain Skog, uh, what are the conditions right now? We're in the dreaded Drake. Uh, what's happening right now? Yes, uh, first I will say good afternoon to you and welcome to the bridge. Uh, the conditions at the moment is uh, fairly good. Or I would say very good. Uh, we had... Uh, depression here two days ago and it has passed now away so we are behind the low pressure system and so put this way we are just between two weather systems at the moment and uh, therefore we have this uh, rather calm weather situation and the winds are now from from the north and uh, follow us down to Antarctica. So the uh, winds are behind us. As a matter of fact, we've been making, uh, we're, we're, we're ahead of schedule at this point. But uh, explain the weather pattern. Uh, you were talking about the depressions, and the, uh, that is a very difficult uh, uh, um, subject to comprehend sometimes. Uh, explain the weather so we all can understand it. Well, it's, it's a very complex story, but to make it simple here, on this latitude, uh, the weather system is moving from west to east. And uh, everyone have, of course, heard about the famous Cape Horn, when the sailing ship tried to go from, uh, from east to west, they had to face the wind, they had to go against the wind, and that was very difficult at that time, so they had to wait, sometimes they had to wait there for three, four, maybe five months to catch uh, the wind the opposite direction. So the frequent wind situation is here from, from uh, west to, let's say the weather system is moving from west to east. And uh, there is a link of uh, depressions, low pressure system. They're coming one by one here, and they're moving very fast. So you have only nice weather, maybe one or maximum two days. So I presume that when we are close to the peninsula Antarctica, then we will have a uh, low pressure passing us behind. That's what we, we are pre predicting. Right. Okay, now, uh, when we spoke earlier, we were about a half an hour away from uh, entering the passage. What what occurs at that at that period of time, at that point, in that half hour that we were talking about, that makes the difference in this passage, in, in, in this water, because we're in the same water? What what line have we crossed at that point? I'm not sure I understand your question. Well, in other words, we're in, we're in a body of water, we're in, we're in the South Atlantic, yeah. and all of a sudden we cross this imaginary line, and we're in the passage, and all of a sudden batting down, you're, you're, batting, you're tying down the deck chairs and uh, a lot of precautions. Uh, at this point, it's not really necessary at this point. I don't know if it's going to get progressively more difficult, but what happens when we cross that imaginary line? Well, this uh, precaution we are taking here is routine. We're always doing that uh, since Drake Passage is famous for, for bad weather. But how does Drake Passage begin? What, what's the phenomenon that makes it all of a sudden a very serious place to be traveling? I'm, I'm, I'm a little unclear on that. Okay, that's because uh, of the latitude. Because all around the world, on this latitude, uh, I think uh, we heard about uh, Roaring Forties. Uh, is that screaming uh, 60s and uh, what's that? Period 60 something. Anyway, oh, is that the years, the decades? It goes around to this strong winds. They are in those latitudes all around the Earth. But particularly here, when you have South America and the Peninsula Antarctica coming close together, that will have the kind of amplifying effect. Effect. It's uh, you say tunneling and funneling the winds. Right. So this is a place uh, uh, very exposed for the reason that uh, the low, low system, low, low pressure system coming here and we squeeze together because the land masses. Right. It's very possible. That's why exploration in the Antarctic didn't happen in the 1800s or earlier perhaps because of this. Well, as soon as uh, 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 people could sail, I guess, this was the great equalizer of the passage here because it's always been Yes, yeah, sure. They had uh, they had uh, big problems to to explore the area because of uh, the bad weather. Uh, so that was just a few who had uh, 
possibility, possibility to do that. Right. Okay, now this is a 650 mile stretch of open sea. It takes anywhere between 48 and 55 uh, hours. You said the wave height could be uh, 20 to 40 uh, uh, feet. Um, uh, how does that stack up to the conditions right now? What are the, basically, what are the heights? And because of the uh, tailwinds, uh, what are we looking at? What's the estimate? The wave heights at the moment, it, it's only uh, seven, eight feet. And uh, it, yes, you said 40 feet. That's very rarely. That's 30 feet. Uh, that's uh, more common. Thing. Right. And the time-wise, because of the, I guess the tailwinds again, the schedule. Uh, are we on? What are we on course to do to come through? The, would it be 48 hours or 49? Um, what, how is our schedule looking right now? How are we looking? As it looks now, it will be maybe less than 48 hours. Uh, but uh, the things in this latitude and further south is that the weather changed so fast this low pressure is moving so fast so already tomorrow afternoon i predict uh, there will be a little more of wind and um, it's going to start rolling and uh, and uh, the speed will be slowing down a little yes uh, okay. but as it looks now and if we are lucky then we can uh, probably be there in 48 hours yeah? so then saturday november 12th uh, sometime in the afternoon we can expect uh, some more more unstable weather how far ahead can you can you see the weather at this point how far ahead can you plot the weather not more than uh, 24 hours so they try to give forecast 48, but they're not reliable. Right. Okay, so then we can look for some uh, rolling, uh, rocking and rolling coming up uh, tomorrow. We're, we're a day or so. Uh, I'm not sure the, the number of hours, but we're about to be heading into Drake Passage again, dreaded Drake Passage, on the way back north. And I spoke with the captain earlier in the lounge, and uh, we got to talking about the passage. And I said, how does it look? He says, good. But he had that smile. And remember, they they know the weather about 24, maybe a, a day and a half, 24 hours, maybe a day and a half in advance and he gave me this uh, he gave me a look and a smile so uh, we could be in for a little uh, semi-rugged passage uh, but uh, but uh, we'll find out about this together as we get closer so uh, let's cut tape as we close out this edition of visions we're just coming through the passage now the Drake passage uh, this is uh, it's a little rough uh, Right now, coming through the passage, you can hear the ship creaking, perhaps. And as we came uh, downstairs this evening after dinner, uh, there are sickness beds uh, uh, hanging on the rails of the ship. It's uh, it's in three languages, so we'll all understand, or most of us, I guess. Uh, sickness bag, spute butel, or sac vomitoire. Sac vomitoire. So uh, that's a story from the Drake Passage. You can almost hear the creaking of the ship here. From time to time, uh, the Little Red Ship uh, shudders. We're looking out of uh, the cabin window right now. We're on the second level up. So our porthole, not window, but we call it a porthole, is probably uh, probably 15 to 18 feet uh, above the water. And we're looking out the uh, porthole right now, and there are a few waves that have uh, had that have come. Whoa! There goes one. Came right up to the window. The mid porthole. Uh, I don't know if we can hear this. Uh, you can hear the ship creaking, I believe, but uh, maybe we can hear some of this going on outside. Well, I'm going to put it right to the porthole, the microphone, see what we hear. And you can hear the ship creak, and it's being buffeted around, and it's a not not a uh, a calm night out there. There's also a beauty to it because as the spray, the white spray comes off the ocean, it's just uh, it's just pretty incredible. The whole uh, the whole uh, 
the whole sensation here. Uh, in fact, instead of listening to it here in the cabin, let's head upstairs to the bridge and catch the full brunt of it from up there. Uh, I think you'll be duly impressed. Let's head up to the wheelhouse now. at a very angry sea right now. We're looking at a very angry sea. I bet you we're talking about 20-foot waves. They're traveling along with us. Kind of, listen. The visibility is very, very limited. The spray is just blowing us. It's incredible. This is a very angry sea. This is the angry sea they talk about. Listen to it. I'm just going to play this out to the uh, end of this side of the tape. I think more than any other uh, piece I've ever done on radio, uh, this has got to be the most, sound-wise, the most amazing thing I've ever, uh, I've ever set out and done. It is bone chilling out here. That's ocean, folks. One time this ship was at about a, I guess, uh, I don't know, 45 degree angle. We were looking straight down into the water. The uh, starboard side was seemed up in the air and the port side almost laying, laying on the water. We're going to go inside now. That's uh, the that's, that's sound of the Drake, folks. It's a, uh, it's a tough night. Let's get out of the cold. <laughs> 